to Club Bible Song New! No, wait, that's New Song Bible Club! We're going to talk about obeying God in difficult times. But first, let's start with a little review. Sing along if you can. All right, kids, let's sing the books of the Bible. Can you guys remember the first five? Time for an activity. Here is a picture that goes along with the Bible story you will hear today. Study the picture closely for 30 seconds. After that, the picture will disappear, and we will see how much you can remember. Let's see how much you can remember about the picture. Number one, how many lions are in the picture? There were seven lions. Number two, what color is Daniel's robe? His robe was green. Number three, who was looking through the opening at the top of the lion's den? The answer is the king. Number four, what is on the ground by the lion's feet? This one might have been a little hard to see, but the answer is bones. Good job, everybody. Now, we're going to sing one more song before Mr. Matthew comes and tells us about Daniel and the lion's den and the importance of obeying God.
week for our Bible story, we read about Daniel. And we read this story that there was this King Darius, and he wanted to set up different levels of leadership over his land. And he knew that Daniel was a very responsible man that could lead his country. Well, there was a lot of people that didn't like Daniel. See, Daniel wasn't from Babylon, where they were now. Daniel was a Jew. He was from the land of Israel, and they didn't like him. So they started conniving and trying to figure out how they could get rid of Daniel. They came up with a plan, and they brought it before the king, and they said, King, we have a decree we'd like you to sign. Right here is our decree, and it's the official decree. You cannot pray except to the king. Yes, you, King Darius. Here, sign. I mean, nobody should be allowed to pray to anybody else. You're the only God. And so King Darius said, okay, sure. Signed the king. And there it was. The decree for the whole land of Babylon to pray only to the king for 30 days. Now, why would the people, why would the princes come up with a decree like that? Well, they had been watching Daniel for many years, and they'd learned something about Daniel. Daniel would pray. See, God was important to Daniel, and every single day, three times a day, he would come before his window and he would pray. And he would always have the blinds wide open because he wasn't going to be ashamed of God. And those men saw that. They saw that he was unashamedly praying every single day. So they knew if we make this decree and the king signs it, then we'll be able to catch him. Because guess what happened to the person who prayed to somebody besides the king? You're exactly right. If you read the story, you would know. But the decree said that if you did not pray to the king and you prayed to some other god, you would be thrown into the den of lions. Well, these lions were hungry. They were starving for somebody to eat. And if Daniel got thrown in there, he would definitely be gone. So, what happened? Well, Daniel found out about the decree. Because as soon as those men got out of there, they're like, Yes! We got Darius to sign the decree. Now we're going to publish it to everybody that they can only pray to Darius. King Darius. And Daniel will have to make a decision. Either he will not obey his God, or not obey the king. But they knew what he was going to do, because he had never quit for the last many years, no matter what happened. So off they went and spread the news, and Daniel found out about the decree. And, as always, three times a day, Daniel went and prayed in his window towards Jerusalem to his God because he was going to be faithful because God had commanded and he wasn't going to stop. He wasn't going to be ashamed of God no matter how hard the situation was. And then those men spying him out saw that he was still praying and they ran back to the king and said, King, you signed this decree. Look, it, it says it right here. You signed. And guess what? Daniel is over there praying again. Three times a day. He didn't even stop for a wink. He just kept right on going. Well, the king was sad. Because the king loved Daniel. And he's looking through, looking at he's like, is there any exception clauses? Where's the fine print? Can I get out of this somehow? But it didn't work. So they brought in Daniel. 
And King Darius was just at his wit's end. All day he tried to figure out how to save Daniel. But he couldn't sign anything that would make this null and void. This he had signed, and he had to keep his word. So, he commanded that Daniel be thrown into the den of lions. Now, normally they would have thrown him in. This time, maybe they took Daniel, they took a rope, they were like, okay, we're going to lower him in nice and easy, okay? So they wrapped the rope around him. Okay, we're going to send you to the bottom. You're never going to come out of this pit again, but we're going to lower you down anyways. And off he went. And it got darker and darker and darker for Daniel until he could no longer see. After that, the king told Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Darius knew Daniel's God and believed that his God would deliver him. And as Daniel was lowered into that pit, and it was all dark, and he couldn't see, he still trusted God. He believed that God was going to deliver no matter what. And he was going to trust him. Now next week, we're going to find out what happened to Daniel. And what happened to those men that connived to kill him. And what happened to Darius that night when, when Daniel was put in the lion's den. So this week... I want you to finish reading the story about Daniel. So that's Daniel 6, 17 to 28. Read those verses for the rest of the story. And next week, we'll finish the story and see what happened to Daniel.